Good evening, everyone. Say, so in terms of the supervisors, we've got Irene Seleski on, myself, and the Secretary Susabi. We're still waiting for James Brooks to join. Um, but we'll give him just a few more moments, and I will try reaching out to him via phone if he does not answer. Okay, we're going to give Jim a minute or two more. He's having some technical difficulties getting connected in, but uh, you should be on shortly. I'm going to take this time to unmute Irene and Sue. Irene and Sue, you are unmuted, just as an FYI. Hi. I also have John Seleski here with me. Okay, so based on text message that I just got. I'm going to unmute the person marked Charlotte, as I believe that is the solicitor, Andy George. Yeah, that, that's my my younger my youngest daughter. I uh, I would not <laughs> would not have guessed that in a million years, Andy. So I'm glad. <laughs> yeah, she uses that for school. Okay, like I said, uh, Jim's working on getting there. He is. He's queued up. We'll let him in, and we'll get started. Okay. Okay, I just turned the recording on. Oh, I'm ready. Very good. Okay, everyone, welcome to the Thursday, April 30th, 2020 Marion Township Board of Supervisors meeting. Uh, we're holding it via telepresence through Zoom uh, based on the current COVID-19 situation and Governor Wolf's stay-at-home orders. I hope everyone is staying healthy and staying safe. Um, seeing it is now 7.03, we'll call the meeting to order. The first item is normally the Pledge of Allegiance, but uh, because of us being on a conference call, it gets a little muddled with everybody talking all at once. So we've opted to, to skip that for now and we'll resume that once we're back in doing in-person meetings. Um, the first item on the agenda is to approve the minutes of the March 26th, 2020 Board of Supervisors meeting. Uh, we do have to make some uh, last minute additions to the bill portion of that as based on schedule availability and the whole COVID-19 thing, uh, the financial reports were not run out in completion. So uh, to be approved at a later time, I'll make a motion to approve minute for March 26th for the March 26th Board of Supervisor meeting. I'll second that. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Actually, hold on, let me, uh, I think, Jim may still be muted. There we go. Okay, Jim. There we go. Hi. Hi, Jim. Okay. So we're doing roll call. You're you're the last person, Jim. Hi. All right. Okay. So we are unable to approve the minutes for the April 20, 20, uh, 25th, 2020 workshop meeting. Uh, we did not have enough time to get them finished, which is understandable. It's been a busy week, and we actually had the later part of this afternoon without power in a lot of places in Marion Township. So we'll have to just review those and approve those as needed at next month's meeting. Um, the final section before we get into public comment was the payment of the bills for April 2020. Uh, all motion to pay the bill. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. 
Aye. Okay. So at this time, we'll open up the floor for public comments. Because we're on telepresence, we're going to be taking comments through the township email. Ms. Stewart, were any submitted ahead of time? There, there were no comments emailed. Okay. Um, anybody who is on the web, we do have a little chat button at the very bottom. If you want to type in a comment now, within the next minute or two, we'll give you a chance to type that in. Otherwise, uh, seeing no public comments, we'll move to the next item for discussion. Peter, I think Dan Klein is waving. Oh, I uh, he's just outside of my my scroll bar there. So let me uh, let me find Dan Klein here and unmute him. Good evening, Dan. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'd like to make one simple request. Uh, I'd like to request copies of the approved minutes from March plus the approved workshop minutes. Uh, and the treasurer's report to be emailed to me, and you folks have my email address. Okay. The one thing I would ask, Dan, is we'll send you the right to know form just so that we cross all our T's, dot our I's. If you send that to us, we'll make sure they go to you as soon as they're finished. Okay. Thank you very much. If Susan will email that to me, I will take care of it. Absolutely. Do you see the other chat? Uh uh, okay. yeah, I, I see that popped up and, and find Dan in the list here so I can mute him again. Okay. Um, question is from Larry Wissinger. He asked, has the plan been pulled? Um, and regarding your can you unmute us, I'll see if I can find you on the list there. I don't want to unmute everybody at once because generally speaking, the background noise that you get from that is absolutely out of this world. So I recall seeing you on the list there, specifically Elizabeth. Okay. Larry, you are unmuted. Thank you. Your your audio is very very quiet, Larry. Can you hear me? We could not get it live. It's I'm getting a lot of background noise from you, but your voices are very very quiet. Would would you prefer to type it into the chat, or would you prefer us? Debate is is there any more to the question beyond what you've entered? Can you give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down? Because we can't hear you at all. I apologize. No more to the question. Okay. Okay. So we're going to be discussing the plan and what we think our next, our best next steps are as one of the agenda items later on. So don't worry. We will get to that tonight. Okay. So unless we have additional public comments, we will move into the first items for agenda. Okay, the first item is the emergency declaration. We made uh, at the March Board of Supervisors meeting uh, with a provision to extend for a period lasting until further action by the board. Uh, this was signed April 1st. Uh, we don't have to take any action to continue being in that state and having the emergency declaration in place. Um, I suggest that this time we take no action and leave it in place until further notice. Okay, so I see Jim nodding there. Okay, the next item on the agenda is for the appointment of the emergency management coordinator. Uh, we received two inter interested parties, Steve Nicholas and John Celeste. Uh, we had the opportunity, Jim and I, to talk to both people uh, both are very good candidates. They both seem like they have a, a real solid drive to, to really want to improve the community. Uh, however, based on the answers that we, we had from, from both parties after interviewing them, I feel that John is the, the, the better fit for the role. He has a lot of experience in that particular area. That's actually kind of what he does for a living is he does safety and training things around that sort of vein of things, uh, as well as having some prior knowledge and experience in, in similar fashions and similar roles. Um, 
So, Jim, unless you want to weigh in otherwise. No, I'll make a motion to appoint John Seleski as the uh, director. Okay, so the, uh, the motion officially would be to appoint John Seleski as the emergency management coordinator. So moved. Okay. So I'll was second. there a second? Yep, I will second. Irene has to recuse herself because of being married to John. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Jim? Aye. Okay, well, on that same vein of things, I'd also like to motion to appoint John, now that he is the EMC, as the floodplains administrator, since those two roles are very, very heavily related in kind of functionality. Uh, I'll make the motion to appoint John Seleski as the floodplains administrator. Second. I'll second the motion. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Jim. Aye. And I think I remembered that I heard Irene say that she abstained on both motions. Yeah, yeah I, I led that off with she's recused because of being married to John. Okay. Yep. Yeah, so she, she took no part in any of this. Um, seeing as John is within earshot, I can see him in the back there, Irene. Is he interested in potentially being appointed to road crew as well? That way he'd have the ability to go out and if there was a situation where a tree went down in the storm that he could go out and deal with it? Yeah, I figured I'd be responding with them anyway. For that. Okay, so I'll, I'll make a motion to add John Seleski to the road crew as well. I'll second the motion. I'll bring my saw. <laughs> <laughs> he said he'll bring his saw. Sounds good. Um, roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Right. You really want to say aye? Yeah, I think aye. you can do abstain from that because you're married to him. Aye. It's road crew. Okay. Congratulations. Uh, Jim. Hi. Hi, Susan. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the treasurer. So uh, we were previously uh, working with Eileen Height about uh, her being the treasurer. However, the, the bond amount for her to take that position on was uh, substantially higher than would be a permissible in our budget. Um, Dan Klein, who is also on the call, is actually interested in being the treasurer as well. Uh, so pending the bond paperwork, the application coming back, we would potentially next month be making an appointment to have Dan be the treasurer. Um, one of the suggestions that I have is I'd like to keep people kind of in the, in the box, so to speak. Since uh, Irene is currently bonded, I'd like to keep her bonded as well. That way we have kind of some redundancy there and we can more co cohesively work with the treasurer. For example, uh, Dan, if you take a vacation that it's uh, still getting done while you're gone. Um, so I, I would actually suggest that we take a similar tack to how I did uh, road crew for this year, that we appoint Irene as the primary treasurer. She's already bonded. She's already doing the, the responsibility in the role. And then when Dan comes on, we'll get Dan appointed as the, the secondary treasurer despite the fact that he's gonna be doing the, the lion's share of the work, the, the normal day in, day out stuff for the treasury, uh, Irene would be kind of the, the top of that pyramid. So, thoughts? There's certainly enough work that we could, uh, my ideal would be working in tandem, working together. So having the system set up where I could easily come in, do the work. Dan, you could always pick up where I'm at. I could always pick up where you're at. That's my goal, um, to have it more of a continuous flow rather than one person dictating to another. So oh, yeah. to, to me, I see it as working in tandem working yeah. together with it. Yeah. The, admittedly, the primary secondary thing is a little, it can be a little bit of a misnomer. It, it's, we're, we're all a team here. I, I'd like to reinforce that facet as much as I can and as, as, as often as I can. Um, but in terms of just that dynamic, you'd be the one potentially doing, like inter interfacing with the auditors, potentially. You're signing off on official for some of the, the official forms um, and working directly with Dan to make sure that we were in a good spot throughout the year. Um, whether that's coming and going, doing checks, doing deposits, doing whatever you guys work out as the, the system that works best for you, mm -hmm. um, that would be my suggestion. Essentially, we'd have two treasurers uh, one of them being a supervisor as well. 
Yeah, Dan, there's plenty of stuff to do. Don't worry, there's no shortage of stuff to do, Dan. <laughs> Especially to do it right. Um, so I'll make a motion to change Irene Selesky's appointment as uh, alternate treasurer to primary treasurer. I'll second that. I'll second the motion. I'm writing, sorry. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. <laughs> we look forward to working with you on the bond paperwork and everything else to, to make sure that come next month we can hopefully make the appointment for, for you, Dan, as the, the secondary treasurer. I've got the bond paperwork, Dan, so I'll get that to you as soon as possible. Dan, wait, I'm going to unmute him for a second. Okay, you're oh, unmuted, Dan. Oh, you're okay, thank you. Uh, I did forward a uh, resume to Susan. I don't know if she passed that on to you or not. Yes, she yeah. did. Okay, fine. Thank you. So we'll be in touch. Okay. Thank you for volunteering, Dan. I muted him again. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, the next item is tax collector. Uh, as the tax collector is not able to collect taxes in the building, all tax payments must be mailed to her. Uh, Governor Wolf's Act 15 of 2020 states that all property tax penalties uh, at the discretion of local governments are authorized to extend the discount period uh, of local property taxes and waive all fees and penalties associated with them as long as the taxes were paid in full by December 31st, 2020. Note that if we choose to exercise this voluntary option, we will need to pass a resolution and we will need to send it to our elected tax collector, Eileen Height, by May 20th. Uh, Berks County Commissioners and the Treasurer have voted to extend the flat period to September 30th and encourage uh, municipalities to do the same to, uh, honestly, to have consistency. Um, this will also help to alleviate confusion regarding deadlines with the county. Um, just as a side note, the majority of people tend to pay during the discount period. Only 11% tend to pay during the flat period. So, uh, shortly before the meeting, I had emailed out again, just in case anybody needed it, the resolution 2020-04. Uh, do you guys have any questions around no. that? No questions. Okay. okay. Really, that begs the question, are we are we in favor of this? I'm, I'm personally in oh. favor of this. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. In that case, I'll make the motion to adopt resolution 2020-04. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. The next item on the agenda is the zoning hearing board member. Uh, this was previously held by Nathan Manbeck, but he moved outside of the township. Uh, we received two interested parties. It was uh, Anthony Martin and David Stabi. Uh, we interviewed both candidates, and again, both are very good candidates. Uh, tough decision. Uh, personally, I'm leaning towards David Stabi based on his prior experiences as a supervisor and his knowledge about the zoning process and the zoning hearing board process from from his prior work with the township. Um, what are your thoughts, Jim and Irene? Uh, again, it's right down the middle. Both gentlemen were both well qualified. And so. Uh, I agree. Uh, but I would lean towards, I would lean towards uh, uh, Mr. Sabi, Sabi also. Okay. Either one of you want to make a motion or should I just continue the trend? I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion that we appoint uh, David Stabi to the Zoning Hearing Board. I'll second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. The next item on the agenda is the website. Uh, so we had been working with Civic CMS last year, and uh, evidently there was a, a bit of miscommunication between some other members of the board and Civic, and the project, when we thought it was progressing, was not actually, so we've gotten that back on track. Uh, we've had several meetings with Civic CMS, and I've been in contact with their art director, Tom Rose, uh, about some of the preliminary things that we need to do. 
uh, we're in a good spot. We're developing quickly, and uh, we should have the site uh, we originally anticipated time frame of about three months. Um, there are some other technology related things that I'm developing in tandem with this, which will hopefully increase the township's ability to, to contact people and be contacted uh, with a little more fluidity. Uh, for example, text message notifications, we can start setting up a list of uh, contacts so that if people want to know, let's say there's a snow emergency that happens, they can be texted about it. Um, reminders about trash day, things like that, that we're hoping to get to a little bit more of a sophisticated level of communication with the constituents rather than email works, but email tends to be send it and send it and wait for the deal. Um, so I'll keep you guys in the loop on that and uh, I'll be in touch with you regarding any of the other items that we need for the website. Uh, the last thing that I think I need from you at this stage, Jim and Irene, is to your suggestions for things that you would want to see within one click on the main page. Uh, things like a, a direct link to ordinances or uh, a link directly to the community association, that sort of deal. So if you can send that to me as soon as you can via, via email, or you know, if you want to give me a call, I'll scroll it down on a piece of paper and send it over to Senate. Do. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank the you. next item on the agenda is the uh, primary, the election day primary. Uh, it has been moved from April 28th to Tuesday, June 2nd. Uh, April 28th is normally a holiday for the office staff. Uh, we will need to make a motion to have the office open uh, on June 2nd, or excuse me, uh, open on the 28th, effectively, even though it was open on the 28th, uh, and closed June 2nd. Uh, essentially shifting the paid holiday for, for staff. So um, as a side note, Berks County Board of Elections will be providing their staff uh, masks, hand sanitizers, gloves. Uh, however, they recommend or have asked that we wipe down tables and chairs and things that the poll workers are going to be used. So that's fine. I can come in the day beforehand uh, or the morning of, depending on what the schedule is. I can just give everything a quick, quick pass to the bleach. Clorox wipe. I have wiped everything down at that the table and the ch chairs. The the folding chairs will need to be moved out of that room. Okay. Okay. But, uh, my my thought was I, I wiped everything down now. I don't think anybody's going to go in there. The building's closed, so okay. that's true. Stay clean. <laughs> it's very true. There's nobody in there to get it dirty. Yeah. Okay. So I'll make the motion to close the office as a paid holiday on June second in place of the April 28th. Closing. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, the next item on the agenda is gonna be one of the more fun ones to talk about. That's the Berks County Redevelopment Authority Community Development Block Grant Program. The, uh, the name is mouthful, um, but we need to discuss this in, in a great deal of seriousness as if we opt to go with this plan, we are unable to participate in the state program. Um, Andy was in contact with uh, some individuals regarding that. Jim was in contact with some individuals around that. Um, the real big question is, which one do we think is gonna be the better fit for us in terms of uh, trying to secure grants? And obviously, the state has a bigger pool of things, but there's more applicants. The county has a slightly smaller pool of applicants, but is also a smaller pool of money generally. Um, Jim reached out to somebody to get some details about funding rates and potentially uh, an estimation of annual funds that are available, and they were unable or unwilling to provide that. So we're, we're kind of flying in the dark here. Uh, the one question that I had is um, largely probably going to be an Andy question. If we were to go not with the Berks County level here, would that impede us in any capacity on how we do with BCCD and the dirt and low volume roads? If we did not go with the county yeah. CDBG uh, yeah. program, no, no, that, that wouldn't, wouldn't affect us there. It only, it only relates to that particular program. Okay. So you can't, as I understand it, you can't participate in both the, the Commonwealth pool of this type of funding and the county. Um, so you, you would have to um, 
you know, opt out of the county if you want to, if you want to go for the state money. Okay. But I did talk to Ken Pick and I, um, I think I reported that to, to the board, but um, I talked to Ken Pick, who is in charge of the county money. Um, and he did say, he, he, he said, I would urge the township to stay within the county because there's much more control over it. Uh, although the pool is smaller, the chances of getting that money is much higher. He okay. said that at the state level, it's extremely competitive. So although it's a larger pool, you have a lot more applicants. Yeah. And he did say that, you know, if we did have a project, a large project, that would be something that would be looked at favorably. Okay, good, 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 good. I gotta say, just as a, a personal matter of personal opinion, I'm kind of inclined to stay with Berks. We've had good luck. And the reason I bring up the BCCD, Grant, is we've had good luck at the county level in a lot of the other things that we've done. So, um, I've been trying to opt into this and opt out of the state. Kim and Irene, what are what are your thoughts and opinions on that? Yeah, I guess we didn't have to take any action. We'd, we'd have to take action to opt out. So um, without any feedback at a, at a local level and not being familiar with the program, I'd leave things as is currently and see what our experience is in, with the need to apply for any grants um, and just go from there. Okay, we just have to temper that with the fact that if we take no action, the state will opt in on us that we can't apply for state grant. Correct, correct. So taking no action means that we're opting in, essentially. Yeah, my understanding of that is we're, we're already effectively in it, but I think we just have to return the right. letter. Right, right. So, Jim, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I agree. Uh, I think we'll... We need, need to stay in there for now and uh, see what our experience is. And make it, if we have to make a different decision next year, we will. It's every three years that it gets renewed. Okay. So it will be a conversation we have again in, in three years, maybe. But uh, I think staying at the, the county level is probably our best move. All right. I agree. But thank you for your work on that, both Andy and Jim. And, uh, a lot easier to, to have this conversation than I thought it was going to be. I was expecting far worse, but uh, um, I'm, I'm pleased. Okay, uh, next item on the agenda is the liquid fuels audit. And the final report was received. There were no issues. The audit went well and is effectively closed. Um, so road projects in 2020, uh, we have the packet together that's ready to go out for bid. Prior to that, though, we should look at uh, any remediation uh, or bad spots prior to the overlay. Um, so I know in the past we had Reber and Zerby do that. I'll have to reach out to Franklin and uh, see if he's got any details around that or contracts. Um, the other thing is we're going to need to go out and drive the roads and see if there's anything that has changed in the past couple of months in terms of damage or potholes or anything like that. Uh, that would need to be done on those stretches of the road before we, we get that the other work done. So uh, I will be going out. I would urge the two of you to go out and I'm going to say something to the road crew that if they're, they're out and about and notice anything, to please speak up about it so that we don't have a situation where we, we get to that point of doing oil and chip and mm -hmm. that it's not going to stick or it's mm -hmm. just going to be absolutely horrible. Is uh, Butch familiar with road, which roads need to be patched? Yeah, yeah. There's there's the, the list, and we can make sure that there's a, a short list okay. rather than the whole packet. We can make sure there's a short list in the garage. That way, there will I might just get Bush to take me around so he could show me. Okay. Yeah, and if not, just grab the packet. It it lists which roads and which sections. That was one of the things I was going to cop uh, scan and give you for tonight. I actually made up. I, I just took the list of roads that packet and made up a list. So it. <laughs> Kind of easier to look at. Um, Thank you. So I have that saved. Thank you very much. Yep. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the Conrad Weiser Little League. Uh, because of COVID-19, they canceled their spring youth baseball season, uh, but they may want to use our field during the summer. We'd need a motion to allow them to use the field during the summer at no, at no charge. Um, I'd actually like to take it a step further and allow them to use the field for the remainder of 2020 at no charge, depending on what their season actually translates to. 
So I'll make that as a motion. Second. Use for the remainder of 2020. Correct. Okay. With Peter and Jim second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. I'll send him an email and let him know that. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the G BGLDR completion report for school in Wintersville, the, the culvert there. Uh, Peter Wallace, as he still has an active certification for that, is going to sign as soon as he's back in town. Uh, so no action needed on that, but once it's signed off, we can potentially get the remainder of the, the reimbursement for the grant that we, we did on that project. Uh, speaking of Wintersville Road, uh, we had a, a complaint come in from Wayne Motter at Wintersville Road and Stoutford Road. Uh, if we recall back, this is what we were looking at for that intersection with the trucks where the, the turn is exceedingly sharp and they're, they're kind of knifing there and it's doing horrible things to his lawn and just safety in general. Um, so we reached out to Jim McCarthy uh, from an engineering standpoint, what has to be done. Uh, they sent back a, a response that uh, we could, with a very simple engineering uh, component, we could get that corrected. Uh, we would have to pass a resolution to place any signage uh, for no truck traffic along that section of road. Um, additionally, the boulders that the homeowner had placed there are actually in the right of way. So we would need to request that he move them back a little bit so that they're not in the right of way. And then, assuming we go that route, uh, work with the neighboring municipality about getting signage up on the opposite side of that road to ensure we don't have truck traffic going up. Um, Definitely. My Definitely. Or we should move on this. We'll authorize, I'll make a motion to authorize uh, McCarthy Engineering to do the needed uh, engineering study around that. And then for next month's meeting, if everything goes smoothly, then we can talk to Andy leading up to that about the resolution. Yeah, it would it would actually be an ordinance. Oh, okay. um, yeah, so it would be part of our our normal uh, traffic ordinance that we have those with uh, things like speed limit stop signs and basically you know traffic restrictions. Okay, good. So if everything goes smoothly between now and next month, that would be kind of a non-issue to be able to place that ordinance in. in. I drove out and looked at it, and it's much needed. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I don't know if anybody caught that, but I'll, I'll make the motion to uh, authorize the party engineering to do the needed study. Second. Okay. Did you say needed study? What did you say? I can't yeah, hear you. Needed study. Need. Say it again. Okay. You want the whole whole motion, sir? No. Just what kind of study did you say? Needed. Okay. That's what I thought. Um, Peter made the motion. Irene second. Is that right? Did Irene yes. second? Okay. Yes. Roll call. Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Jim. Aye. Okay. Kind of as a follow-up question to that, uh, Andy, from a yes. legal standpoint, with the stuff that's in Title Seventy Five about. Uh, one of the biggest things is parking. There's a requirement that cars not be parked within 20 feet of an intersection. Is there anything that we have to do other than the ordinance for actually placing signs um, in terms of putting up signs that correspond with the, the Title 75 requirement? No, not that I'm aware of. I mean, that that's uh, motor vehicle code. So that that is the law. So, so yeah, we... we uh, we could enforce that based on uh, and cite based on the motor Pennsylvania Motor Vehicle Code. Okay, so uh, Jim and Irene, what are your thoughts around the? There's actually two spots that, that immediately jump out for me. There's the area that the Stonecroft residents raised as a concern, um, getting that posted on either side, 20 feet either side of the intersection to to, to cut down the the cars that are parked there, as well on uh, Water Street where Water Street meets Main. Oh yeah that both sides should be five to 20 feet from that intersection because it's it's entirely blind. I know I've almost gotten in a car accident there. I know Sue's almost gotten in a car accident there. It's You can't see anything guaranteed to the left when you pull out of that intersection. Definitely, definitely. Okay, so Andy, is there, if for anticipation of next month, is there things that you would have to prepare around that for us to be able to, to act on that? 
No, not that I'm aware of. Um, but if there is something, I'll I'll report back. Okay. Thank you. Well, let's give us ourselves a little time to look at that and ruminate on that. But I, I think that's going to be uh, a much needed addition in a couple areas there. And thankfully, it, because of the whole Title 75 thing, we don't have to back it up with any traffic studies or anything outlandish. So. No. Okay, so the next item on the agenda is the Act 537 plan. So uh, to answer your, your question, Larry, the plan has not yet been sold, and there's a very good reason for that. Um, earlier in the year, we asked the solicitor for a letter of opinion about the current state and really what the, the options are for us to move forward. There are three main options that we have in, at our availability. We can either continue with the current plan as is, we can pull the plan hard, or we can work on a revision. I'd like to clarify that the last two points, whether we pull the plan hard and put a new plan in or revise the current plan, we are working as a revision on either one. Right now, the DEP is receptive to the idea of us making changes to the plan. Uh, we had a, an informational session with them about the ongoing litigation for the Environmental Hearing Board. And they stated that they are willing to review anything that we send them. So at this point, we are in a good spot where the, the lines of communication are open and there's a willingness to cooperate and work towards a common, common good on this. I personally feel that if we pull the, the plan hard and try and replace it in that fashion and do the division like that, we're going to be doing ourselves a disservice simply because right now they want to work with us if we pull the plan, that will evaporate, and we will be in a much harder position to affect any sort of change whatsoever. Um, Jim and Irene, what are your your thoughts on that? I'd, I'd like to add, add, I'd definitely like to add a little bit to that. Um, on what a lot of people don't understand is township code requires the solicitor to provide us with an unbiased opinion. The solicitor serves at the pleasure of the board. And this current board is not in favor of the sewer and I want the public to clearly understand that. Um, we understand it would be quite a big financial burden to everyone that's affected. Um, Andy is not biased one way or the other and he has provided us with a clear statement of law, providing us both with case law as well as statutory information, as well as what the process has been up to this point with dealing with the DEP and the court system. And I agree 100% with Peter. Um, I, I guess Peter uses the word believe. I, I think it's clear on its face that, that the courts would be against us if we would pull the plan hard. And unfortunately, the DEP would be right behind them fining us. Um, and, and it could be quite, quite a devastating sum to us as a small township. We are all working to help everyone to get what is best for us. No one wants to put anyone in, in a bad financial position, uh, but unfortunately this is the card that we've been dealt with, And but we're all working hard to make the situation the best for everyone. But I really want everyone to clearly understand that this is not something we, we can do willy-nilly. This is something that we have to deal with with the situation that is, is currently in place. Thank you. I'd like to just kind of add further to that, that we're, we're unanimously of the opinion that nobody should be financially broken by this. If there's a time where we have to, to stand our ground about feasibility and funding, we'll absolutely do that. We're, we're not here to, uh, to make anybody's life worse, to drive them out of their house and home. We're here to make everybody's lives better. And there are certain ways and certain things that we have to do to try to meet that end. And we want to try to avoid things like one of the one of the potential outcomes of pulling the plan hard would be uh, no additional on lot permits being issued, a moratorium on new construction in the township. They could put corrective action plans in place, issue administrative orders. There's a host of things at their disposal that they've so far not taken advantage of throughout any of the other points of this process that we've been either delayed. Uh, or just kind of in general, because the Act 537 has been, and Andy, keep me honest on time frames here, it's been technically due for like 30 years. <laughs> I'd say it's about 30, if not more. 
yeah. So it's there's been as as hard as it is to believe, there's been a high degree of patience around this, and it's it's a situation where we can try and work collectively together to get to the end that works for everybody. Even if it's not a complete win across the board for everybody, it's a situation that will fit and work well for everybody involved. If we don't do it right, we'll have situations where we which result in more lawsuits, fines, things that I don't even want to consider. So please take away from this that the board is still working in the best interest of the township and its, its residents. And that includes those that are going to be affected by the, the potential school. Peter, are you able to address the comments that we just received from Lynn Erickson? Is that up on your screen? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Lynn, um, and Andy, this again, just a simple right to know, correct? The, the cross T's dot I's? Yeah. Okay. Right. Lynn, we'll, we'll, we'll be happy to, to email you the, the right to know form. And as soon as you send it back, we have a digital copy of the letter. I can email that to you as soon as we have it. Um, if you'd like, if, give, me a, give me a sign in the chat or I can scroll through the windows here. If you'd like, I can unmute you for a second. If I can find you. There you are. Okay, Lynn, you are unmuted. I'm not certain why you would have to have a right to know on something that's part of the, would be part of the minutes. I assume that it's part of the minutes. Not that I'm aware of. It's never been part of, made part of the minutes. Yes, it's, it's something we have, but I, I mean, I can, I can show you the minute, the minute sheet that I have. It's, it's a, a line item, but it's not actually physically contained within the minutes. I don't think I've ever seen a situation where a letter that came in wasn't available to the citizens, but if that's the position, then we'll follow up. Yes. It's a memorandum from the solicitor to, to the board. It's probably not successful anyway, but yeah. I mean, if you really want it, I, I don't care. Yeah, bottom line, I have I have no dysfunction about giving it to you, Lynn. I just want to make sure that we're observing proper process. That's well, when you suggested that there was case law <clears throat> and examples involved, I hadn't found any of that. And if um, any of that is something contrary to what I've learned, uh, it would certainly help our process, Cage's process, as far as their appeal is concerned. Yeah. Um, and I don't want to do it right to know and then have Andy say, oh, it's attorney-client, so I can't tell you what it is. I mean, that's... Yeah. I'll, I'll go so far as to say that you're you're not going to run into that, like Andy. It's it's not yeah. my client privilege, and as as Irene is the right to know officer, and I am the alternate, I can say with absolute certainty that if you if you slip us that form, I will send you the letter. I will personally email it to you. Okay. Okay. We uh let me locate Lynn here. There we go. Lynn is now muted again. Uh, do we have anything that we'd like to add either from a supervisory standpoint, Jim and Irene, or Andy from a, a legal standpoint for Emma? I'd like to just take a moment to thank Sue again for holding down the fort through all of this. Um, she's done a wonderful job, and uh, I can't thank her enough for all her hard work with everything that's been coming through the office. Okay. Well, you make it kind of easy. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we very deeply appreciate it, Sue. You're, you're well, quite welcome. It's my job. That's a good work. Um, the, the only thing that I would say, and um, I forgot to mention this when we talked about the resolution that extended the tax deadline. Yeah. I believe that um, Dennis Adams, who's the county treasurer, wants that resolution also. Um, Sue, if you don't have his email address, I do. I can send it to you because it goes to our tax collector, but I think that Mr. Adams also wants it. I think I have the email from him, um, but, but if I don't, I'll, I'll ask you for it. Okay. And the reason, and this is only for 2020, um, and um, the way I understand is that the county is looking at a, another system for next year where there could be the ability to have different deadlines. So municipalities could actually have different deadlines than the county does because they might be able to split those bills uh, going forward. They just don't have the ability to do that, which is why it's really important to be on the same page this year as the county because it would be a mess if not. So. Okay. Yeah, we'll absolutely make sure that that, that gets to whomever it needs to get to. 
Uh, my only other comment is that uh, Kelly looks really comfortable. <laughs> Okay, so that that concludes the agenda items. Uh, I do not have the police report in front of me, so I'll have to do the recap on that particular item for next month. Uh, as everyone may have surmised, the community association has not been meeting to observe social distancing. A lot of the events were regrettably postponed, but uh, we're looking forward to this whole mess clearing and working closely with them about rescheduling things like the, the car show. So. Uh, at this point, I have no further comments. Irene, do you have anything? Um, if you could just reiterate where uh, residents can find this on YouTube. Absolutely, yeah, thank you. So we actually have a YouTube channel now. It is Marion Township. Uh, any of the meetings that we do during the COVID-19 social distancing, such as this one, uh, will be placed up on YouTube. And uh, in the future, as we return to the building to do the meetings, the intent is to potentially start doing either Zoom sessions for anybody that wants to dial in and view from home and or live streaming to YouTube uh, so that we have a, a, a broader audience than it, what would potentially be showing up physically in the township later. So uh, we'll, we'll post a link on the, the door. Uh, if anybody wants to reach out, you can send a, an email to marionteownship at comcast.net and we'll reply back with the link. Otherwise, you should be able to just go on YouTube and search Marion Township. Someone has something festive going on in the background there. Sorry. <laughs> um, Irene, do you have any additional comments? Nothing else, thank you. Okay, Jim. I have no comments. Phenomenal. Andy. Uh, no, nothing further. Okay. Sue. Nothing. Okay. It's been, actually, it's been interesting. <laughs> you, have two, you have two things on the on the agenda. This oh, do I? The signing. last page. The last page didn't print out. That's when the electric went off. <laughs> ah, okay. So there were two things that you had on here for street sign inventory. I believe it was uh, the offer that Dave extended about assisting us with doing okay. bases on some signs as it's a super <laughs> outright replacement. Uh, right. As well as a, a agenda item for packing potholes, uh, which I believe would be around getting code pack. We did get an email from new enterprise i believe it was and i think i forwarded it to everyone um that they're kind of back in business selling aggregates and hot asphalt it did not mention cold patch but i can call and see if they're making it at this point um okay. i know the road crew is looking forward to getting out there and patching potholes again so if you can find out if it's available that's something that uh I'd like to actually start doing this month. I think we've cleared the danger of any snow or inclement weather. So at this point, we, we switch from snow season to road work season. Right, right. And then just keep in mind that we still need to get the salt and store it. Yep. So we still, we still have some time on that, right? Yeah, but I wouldn't wait until the end. No, I don't want to wait until the last minute, but if we use this upcoming 30 days to figure out what we want to do, whether it's securing more of the big concrete blocks and some covers or tarps or something like that, or, or really what our available options are to take the remainder of the salt contract. Right, okay. I see nodding across the other two supervisors. So I, <laughs> um, if we don't have anything further, I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Time is now 7.49 p.m. Seconds. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, I think the meeting is adjourned. Thank you for coming out virtually, everyone. And uh, I hope you have a, a wonderful evening and stay safe. You we'll too. See you next month, if not sooner. Thank you again. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.